Okay, here's a short piece on renewable energy. And what I'd like to do is begin by simply defining the term. So renewable energy is energy that's derived from renewable sources. So we know, for instance, that we are running into an oil scarcity. We've run out of cheap, easily available oil. But we're also aware of the fact that the sun will be burning in our sky long after all of us are gone. So that would be an example of a renewable energy source, one that simply won't run out. Now, what I'd like to do now is talk about what to like and what to be a little concerned about with respect to renewable energy. So first of all, let's start with the good stuff. So the, the most obvious, I think, is the environment. So we're aware of the fact that we're belching billions of tons of garbage into our skies and into our oceans, and this is causing huge risks in health and safety to people and all other living things on this planet. So that's something that we, when we think of renewables, we say, well, right on, let's get more of that. Um, we also understand that, for instance, the, the, though this is expensive, renewable energy does come at a cost. If you simply want to continue to burn coal, which contributes about uh, 48, 49 percent of our electricity in the United States, you can do this at your peril, obviously, but you can continue to do this and it'll be cheap. If you want to spend a little bit more, at least right now, renewable energy is a little bit more expensive, but the costs are coming down, and that's simply because it is technology. It's like, the, it's like any other technology. So you have you know, big screen TVs or what have you. They get less expensive over a period of time. There's no fuel involved with this thing. There's no extraction. There's no drilling. There's no fracking. Um, so it's simply the fact that we're using free fuel, essentially, and using technologies whose costs are guaranteed to fall over a period of time. So that's good. Now, what about some of these other issues? National security. We're borrowing a billion dollars a day and sending it to people who want us dead. We're sending it to people who are avowed enemies of the United States and democratic processes generally. So how smart is that? So, for instance, so empowering terrorism, I would say, is something that or putting an end to that empowerment of terrorism, I would submit is a good thing. Another thing I'd point out about this is that there are numerous flavors. As we'll cover in this series, there are, there are at least five major flavors and then dozens of sub-flavors, let's call them. And that, I'll tell you why that's so good. Number one, it creates latitude for scientists to make discoveries in different arenas. It also provides an answer to the fact that we have a landmass of three and a half million square miles here. That's very, very different. Where we have forests, we've got sun in the deserts, we've got uh, wind in the plains and so forth. So if you want, for instance, energy from the tides, you know, that are moving around in the oceans, that's good if you're in Alaska, but it's certainly not good if you're in Kansas. So this is, the flexibility of this is a very good thing. Now let's talk about cautionary elements of this thing. One, as I mentioned, that it's expensive. The costs are coming down, but you, if you really want the cheapest version of electricity in, uh, right now, you're going to be burning coal. The question is, do you have an appetite for doing that indefinitely? And I hope the answer is no. Um, another thing to say is that there, most of these things are intermittent. So, for instance, the sun doesn't shine at night. The wind blows mostly at night when we need it the least. Some of these other forms are not intermittent, but largely they're, they're not 24 hour a day consistent, what's referred to as base load. So that's something not to like. Um, another thing to say is that the infrastructure, the way in which we transmit the power from where it exists, so for instance, the sun largely in the deserts, to the population centers largely on both coasts, that's expensive. So we need to build out our electrical grid if we're going to do that. And finally, I'll say this, that the, the migration, if you will, the path from where we are to where we need to be in renewable energy flies in the teeth of the most powerful, wealthiest people on Earth who have made their fortunes in the traditional energy industries. So, for instance, the oil industry controls more lobbyists than any other group in the known universe. So when you say, okay, well, let's, let's do something as a nation with respect to renewable energy, recognize that you're running into that buzzsaw of just an unlimited amount of funds that, who, whose um, imperative is to maintain the status quo. They don't want to see change. They love their monopolistic positions. So it's going to be an interesting battle, but that's something to say about you know, what to like and what to fear about the future of renewable energy.